how much creatine is enough? In other words, where is the point on this graph where this is the creatine benefit and this is the amount of creatine where there is uh, increasingly diminishing return for an additional marginal unit of creatine. One idea I had to figure this out is to use muscle size as a proxy. So the idea, one idea behind creatine is that it draws water into the muscle. So if you are creatine deficient and you then begin to take creatine in either powdered form or capsule form or whatever form, or you increase maybe your uh, creatine through eating more foods that have a lot of creatine, then the size of your muscle, because of the drawn in water, would begin to begin to uh, grow basically, or begin to become bigger. This now gives us the method, the possible method, that if we give the body additional creatine and additional creatine and additional creatine, then we can see where the body doesn't need more additional creatine since there is kind of a creatine limit in terms of how big the muscle can get with the wa water that is drawn in. So if there is no additional water drawn in or if the muscle doesn't increase in size in response to creatine intake, then this is probably a sign that additional creatine might not have an additional benefit. But this is only if we assume that creatine only has... So if we only use the muscle size and also the kind of leanness that results out of this, since if there is a given layer of fat over the muscle and the muscle begins to grow from either more water or also more muscle size in general, then, then this probably only partially acts as a proxy for the creatine intake that is beneficial. Because uh, we might not know if there is maybe additional creatine in the muscle, if additional creatine in the muscle, for example, would have a benefit, but is not visible. So we use the visibility of the creatine and the, the water it draws in kind of as a proxy for creatine intake or the benefit of creatine intake. But in general, there might be two different, two different uh, sides to creatine intake. The one is the physical performance side, and the physical performance side could be approximated by the intake of creatine and then the muscle size through water. So if, for example, you seem flat in the mirror and then you take creatine and you take more and more creatine, then you become kind of leaner again or seemingly leaner, so the muscle uh, grows again, the muscle belly grow again in response to creatine, then probably you were not creatine. So we, you were basically a little bit creatine depleted if we assume that the optimal level of creatine is kind of just the normal level of creatine and everything under it is a negative aspect compared to the opportunity cost of having a satiated level of creatine. This also now means if you take your normal dose of creatine, this could be in the beginning maybe 5 grams, which is kind of the average recommended dose, it could be also 7.5 or 10 grams if you weigh a little bit more, then if there are days, and this is something kind of I made up for myself now, because I asked myself where is kind of the limit, where is the limit where I don't have at least an additional physical benefit. So in terms of physical performance, again, as proxied by muscle size. And the idea is that if I take the high dose of creatine from day to day, and so you can not take creatine daily apparently without any negative side effects, apart from maybe a few minor things. So there seems to be somewhat of a link with uh, increased DHT levels, which might be linked or are linked to hair loss, but this seems to be not that proven. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you take, let's say, your the, the daily dose of creatine you think is is basically giving you still a benefit, but you think that this is kind of the, the maximum dose that gives you a benefit, and additional creatine would only have a marginal benefit, and you flatten out. So after like two days, or maybe you are on a hike, and then your muscle bellies begin to shrink again, and this would be a sign that additional creatine would still be useful because the creatine is not filling the muscles with water. But there is something else to consider, and there's something else is that you obviously also have to drink the water you then have more in your muscle. So there are, I think, some estimations that if you are in my weight range, let's say that you have one or two additional kilograms in terms of your body weight that is then the drawn in water just from creatine and not so much the muscle size that only uh, begins to increase over months and years. If you 
have them the additional accumulated benefits of higher performing muscle during the workout and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say is that you can basically look at the, or at least according to this idea I had, you can basically look at consecutive days and if there are days at which your muscles then are kind of depleted again, then this could either be a sign that you don't drink enough, but usually if I, if I take creatine, and this is just an anecdotal example from me again, if I take creatine without the recommended water of about 300 milliliters per 1.25 grams, then I notice that I am very thirsty, so I have kind of to drink the water. But of course there also could be the case where you eat a lot of, or you ingest a lot of creatine and you don't drink enough water, so there would be, you would have the visible, you wouldn't have the visible creatine muscles, the bigger muscles with the drawn in water from creatine, but you still would take creatine, so the creatine wouldn't necessarily benefit you because your water intake would be a little bit too low. So with the ideal water intake and the creatine intake also kind of set at the highest level, if you flatten out basically during your normal week, you could probably take a little bit more creatine.